Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Well, tonight's cold front moving out, so things are settling down. But now as we head into the weekend, things are going to start getting a little more active. In fact, Sunday is going to be quite an interesting day. New computer model data coming in right now. I'll have it for you coming up. I'm Jason Coulthorpe at Bloomfield Hills High School, where tomorrow students here will be leaving early. It's a walkout. Coming up, what is what they're protesting and what the district is acknowledging is happening here. All right, Jason, we're going to begin, though, with more than 40 shots fired into a family's home while their seven-year-old son was sleeping inside. We're glad you're with us tonight at 11. It happened Halloween night, shortly after kids were finished trick-or-treating. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but now that family is living in fear. Victor Williams is on Detroit's west side with their plea for help. Scary situation for this entire family. Take a look at the damage that was done. You'll see bullet hole after bullet hole following someone deciding to spray this home down with bullets on Halloween night. As you can tell, the damage done to their appliances means that their home will never be the same again. But as it turns out, this may have been a case of mistaken identity to begin with. My family were traumatized. Um, I just, it's unbelievable. Gloria Dooley, her seven-year-old son and mother Debbie are lucky to be alive after an October 31st nightmare. Hit my couch, um, went through the wall right there. Their Chapel Street home was riddled with about 40 bullets shortly after they got home from a night of trick-or-treating. You can see where one of the rounds went through the TV and many other places all throughout the house. It went through my dishwasher right here. Grandma fell asleep on the couch watching TV when the shots started to ring out. One bullet ended up landing just feet away from where she was laying. It was about 10 o'clock in the evening. Next thing I know, bullets flying through, through the damn window. Okay? I dropped like this. The really frightening part is that Gloria doesn't believe the bullets were meant for her home, but another one nearby instead. I'm just sad about it. They really hurt some innocent people. And now this family is out of a home. We're leaving. I don't know where we're going. I don't have a place to stay. Home. I'm basically homeless right now, but we're getting out of here. And that's just a really sad situation. We do know that this family had one of those doorbell cameras installed on the front of their home, but unfortunately it stopped working just about two days before all of this happened. So as you guys can all imagine, this is a very rough time for this entire family. So if you would like to help them out, head over to our website, click on Detroit.com to see how to do so. Victor Williams, local yeah, I know a lot of people will. All right, Victor. A massive student walkout expected tomorrow at Bloomfield Hills High School where students say racist incidents have not been sufficiently dealt with by the administration. Jason Colthorpe live right now. Jason, is this a recent development? Well, actually, this, some of the students I talked to tonight, Karen, say e going back even before remote learning kicked in, so a couple of years, they remember some racist incidents, some anti-Semitic incidents, but it's what's happened over the last three days that have really popped up and gotten students to form this walkout that's happening tomorrow. Walking into school and seeing kill all ends. There was a kid who had a, uh, a private story called Racist Only, where he would post racist memes. These Bloomfield Hills High School students say they are just two of many who are tired of seeing hate in their school. Kids in the hallway saying get to the cameras, just saying the N-word blatantly and in class. There's been a lot of incidents of racist hate speech at our school and anti-LGBTQ hate speech. Hate, they say, is being tolerated. We went to the office and we've been dismissed about some of the situations. And they said, they like backed up the kids saying y'all shouldn't get mad at them and don't like yell at them. It's prompted students to now take action with a school-wide walkout tomorrow afternoon, and they hope the staff takes it seriously. Even though most of the kids who are doing this, I'm sure would be immediately apologetic and say that they regretted their actions if it was actually brought to light, it's still terrifying that people do it and get away with it. It's scary because you're seeing a bunch of kill all about your race and kids wanting to kill you guys just because of your skin color around school. 
One of the students, by the way, thinks it, this could be at least half the school that walks out tomorrow, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. We did get a lengthy statement from the district tonight, and I want to read part of it for you. The district is aware of racist hate speech written on the walls of our restrooms and shared on private social media accounts this week. We launched an immediate investigation with the assistance of the Bloomfield Township Police Department. Hate speech and racist behavior will not be tolerated and does not represent our mission as a school or the high standards we hold for our students or ourselves. The district has also taken several other immediate actions regarding this to try and stamp out racism, which includes hosting a community collaboration event. We have posted the entire statement by the district with this story at ClickOnDetroit.com if you want to go check it out. Karen? Wow. Jason, the, these students went, they complained, they didn't seem to go anywhere, so now they're doing this. What sort of progress are they hoping for now? Well, frankly, they'd like to see punishments doled out to their liking, and that's something the district did not address in his statement, but they think these kids who are guilty of this should be facing two-week suspensions minimum, maybe expulsions for some of these things, and they'd also like the, the, uh, the student leadership groups to have a more vocal role in this when they do talk about it. Karen? All eyes on Bloomfield Hills High tomorrow. Thank you, Jason. 60 degrees this afternoon. Wait, was that today? It doesn't seem like a long time ago. Was, it was warm. Was it was, the sun was out. It was yes, nice. The wind came nice. around too. And then after that, I don't even know what happened. It was a mess. Nope. <laughs> That's a wrap up, right? Yeah, Paul, yeah. What, what's going on here? Uh, did you step outside early? I, I'm, look at this. We had a high of 67 degrees today. That was only four degrees shy of our record of 71 set in 1964. The morning low was well above average as well. So this is going down in the books as a very warm November day. Storm Tracker 4 now shows right exactly on schedule. The rain is moving out of the area here just on the far east side, right on the shoreline. It's just moving off the shoreline here into Lake Huron. So we are doing OK from a precipitation standpoint, and the clouds are going to be clearing very rapidly as well. Temps, as expected, have dropped down into the 40s, but so has the wind, as expected. You can see we're averaging around 10 miles per hour for our wind right now. So for the bus stop tomorrow, if you're planning for the kids, clear and cool in the morning, 40 degrees, but dry. That's good news. 50 one, but dry with clouds for the afternoon bus stop. Be back to talk about that Sunday forecast. The new model is almost done coming in. I'll have it for you in just a few, Devin. All right, Paul. Turning now to the coronavirus is the state's largest hospital system says we have now entered a fourth case surge and the battle against the virus is far from over. Beaumont says right now they're treating nearly 400 virus patients across their hospital system. That's more than an 11% increase in patients just over the last week. Of the patients currently in the hospital, most 65 to 70% have not been vaccinated. The surge in cases has been building since late summer as people are now spending more time indoors. We know that cooler weather that we've been experiencing over the past couple of weeks um, creates conditions that are more favorable for the virus to transmit. Doctor says the largest case increases are happening among kids between the ages of 10 and 18 and among those living in nursing homes. An update to a story we brought you last night at 11 about a police investigation on Interstate 75. Last night, a Macomb County man reported being shot while driving in the area of Seven Mile and I-75, claiming the alleged shooter was hanging out of a rear window. Well, after investigating, state police say the shooting did not happen on the freeway and that the victim is now not cooperating with investigators. White House announcing today President Biden is going to be in Detroit next week. GM says the president will visit Factory Zero on Wednesday. That's the all-electric Detroit assembly plant. The White House says he'll discuss the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which includes money for electric vehicles. He'll be signing that on Monday. Still ahead here at 11, breakthrough COVID cases are on the rise. Our Dr. Frankie George will be here with the latest data from the state and what it means if you are vaccinated. A baby is found safe 36 hours after being abducted in the middle of the night. Tonight, the many questions surrounding his disappearance and where he's been the whole time. But first, fallout from an explosive day in court. How the defense for teen gunman Kyle Rittenhouse ended its case next.